Welcome to the round of Brazil here at the Autodromo de Alfonso Cordova. Big news is this track has aged, so it's not going to be nearly the pack race we're used to. It's going to be more of a tire race, we believe. Scott Roush, Aiden Shepard, Zayden Davidson round out your top three with Kenny Myatt rounding out the first, second row, and fourth. Ace Vito, Curtis Bouchard, Madeline Myatt are round out the next two rows. Baskinger, Freeze, Tauger, Rahal, Art in 13th. Pericles, Hart, Dodd, and Angel are in down to 17th position. And um, like I said, this is all going to be a tire strategy race. And you know this track has typically been a rather interesting one where it comes to tire wear, or comes to packing up. We're probably not going to see that that much this race. Padcar, Brock, Griffin, Jones, Monaco, Gurian, and Halleck um, from 18th. 24th, Dunbar, Allen, Fitzwater, Caudwell, Moss, Shawrock, Vanderpesh, Michelia, Dover, Dormitory, Lamas, and then you'll see Talil Wallish is going to be in 36th position. Like I said, though, this is all going to be a tire strategy race. You have to keep your tires underneath you in this one. Um, it's not going to be a pack race like we're used to seeing around this track. Uh, however, we are kind of expecting an engine grenade fest, so we might see a couple of engines go. Let's go to the race. Scott Roush and Aiden Shepard lead what is expected to be a pretty different race than what we're used to seeing here at the um, Autodroma de Alfonso Cordova. It's a very much a tire-affected race this season, and away we go. Green flag is out. Scott Roush gets a pretty good start over Aiden Shepard. We're expecting this race to spread itself out pretty quickly here into a um, rather different race here. So, well, maybe not so much now, but... Um, you can see it's pretty condensed, but as you can see, they're definitely slowing down in the center of corners, so it's all about handling now, and a lot of cars that um, typically are pretty fast are toward the back because of that as well. There goes Aiden Shepard, or Scott Roush, rocketing into the lead. Now you've got a big battle for second, really, with the entire rest of the field, because clean air is so important now around this track because of handling purposes. As you can see, the outside line actually seems to be quite faster in some places than others might see the 11's going to try and take over second. Look at the lead that the 25's got right now over Ace Vito in second, Bouchard in third, and Baskinger in fourth. Tire wear is going to be a big factor as well in this race, so we'll see how that plays out as the race goes on. Uh, see how long people can last on a set of tires. There is some four wide in this pack, however, it's not expected to stay too long as um, Padcar, wow, Eddie and Padcar falling way through the field. Uh, he started up pretty high on the order and, well, now isn't exactly doing the best right here. At the front of the field, it seems to be pretty spread out with Scott Rush with a huge lead over Ace Vito, Bouchard, Baskinger, John Hart, one of the co-points leaders with his teammate Pericles, and then you start seeing a little bit of packing here with DJ Curtis, Tauger, Myatt, Madeline Myatt, that is, and Nick Pericles. All within a pack, kind of. Pericles is the other co-point leader, might I add. Uh, and a little, little further back, you've got the two FBRs of Maya and Hart. Maya's, ex Maya's going to retire at the end of the season. He announced after the Mexican race. And uh, we're expecting Hart to maybe do the same. However, we're not sure of that. And you've got a lot of faster cars back here in this middle pack that need to get through the pack to maybe um, do some battling. Look at Bobby Jones trying to set a move on the inside there on the 31. The 51's trying some stuff as well. Dornan Bouchard and Grayson Acevedo have now caught the 25 tar as drafting still is a big factor in this race. However, it's not nearly as much as it used to be. As we go a little further back, you can see that there's still some packing a little further back as you see a lot of cars that don't handle the best, like 17-35, um, Vance Codwell's back here, the Menervinis. A lot of these cars that don't handle the best aren't doing it very well. Uh, I'm surprised he chased Dunbar in the top 20, to be honest with you. Grayson Ace Vito looks underneath Scott Roush for the lead of the race now as uh, he gets a good run through the center of the corner. Ace Vito has a little bit better chassis grip than Roush and takes over the lead of the race. And I believe the 88's going to follow suit on Roush, even though they're in equal equipment. I gotta give Reddit Davis a bit of credit here. There's Vince Fries picked up his first win in uh, Mexico, Roman Rahal and Eric Monaco have all looked pretty strong in the early part of the season, um, individually in certain events, so I wouldn't be surprised if these cars are surprisingly championship contenders. Sorry if my microphone's cutting out a little bit there.
but um, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys are championship contenders at the end of the year. Reddit Davis seems to have a package that's working. They don't have any engine power, but chassis-wise, they are amazing. And they're making up for their engine power loss with a very aerodynamic car as well, so... I would watch out for these Reddit Davis cars as the season goes on. Just look at how easy he just made mincemeat of the FBR of Noah Hart there. Just because of chassis grip in the middle of the corner. Scott Roush has fallen back to fifth place now. As, uh, it seems like on the start of the race his plan was to go as fast as he can to get away from the pack, and now his tires are starting to fall off. So uh, Ace Vito leads over Bouchard, Art, Matty Myatt, and uh, Scott Roush with DJ Curtis in sixth. Um, Jake Baskinger in 7th, Pericles 8th, Rock 9th, and M Kenny Mai at 10th. As you can see, the only real packing this year tends to be from about 11th back. That's Tauger all the way back to maybe Monaco is the pack. So about 10 cars, that's it. And everyone else seems to be relatively single file throughout this field. A little bit of battling there back with Halleck and Wallish. But other than that, it seems to be relatively single file. It's just the nature of this track aging a bit. It and its sister track are known, uh, the OK Corral in Oklahoma, are known for their racing ability, for their race ability in the past. Now you're seeing that um, that's not really the case back here with some of these other cars, because, and even them are starting, even those cars are starting to spread themselves out as well as the tires are starting to wear. The tracks aren't as new as they used to be. They were built at the same time. This track was only used for Brazilian stock car racing. And, of course, the OK Corral we raced on for a while before it was uh, heavily damaged by a tornado. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, both tracks seemed to be aging quite a bit towards, uh, or at least the OK Corral was, which had more use than this. Both tracks seemed to be aging, and they're not racing like they used to. They're racing, actually, a little bit more conventionally to how they would be of a typical mile oval. John Art has worked his tires a little bit better in the 88 of Bouchard now and is all over the back of Bouchard trying to take over uh, second position. Now Bouchard's looking underneath uh, looking underneath the 11 for the lead. Um, it seems like whoever has the lead tends to use a lot more tires. They use their tires up a lot more than second place. So now Bouchard's looking down low to maybe take over that position. Doesn't look like he's going to get it because Ace Vito played a very defensive move there. Now I'm watching the 83 to see what he's going to do. And now the 83 is going to go underneath the two car, or underneath the second place car of the 88. So John Art's up to second. Oh, maybe not. John Art lost a great deal of momentum on the inside there. And now the 88's actually going to fight back on the outside. And, well, I don't know. This is kind of the nature of this track now. Is you're also seeing how much slower they're going now through the center of the corner. They're definitely not doing what they were doing. They're going down to about 150 when they were about 160 at the start of the run. Bouchard loses second, and looks like he's going to lose third to Madeline Maya now. And ooh, looks like we got a battle for the lead heating up between the 83 and the 11. Looks like the 83 of John Hart's going to take it. He, of course, won at the Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. And now because of that, Bouchard in third is all over the back of second place man Grayson Ace Vito now. And of course, Ace Vito's been very good at blocking throughout this race, but now his teammate, the one of Matty Myatt, is now setting him up, or setting Bouchard up for a pass. I've noticed that when Bouchard gets blocked, he doesn't do a very good job recovering from it. Um, he tends to get passed quite quickly by his competitors behind him when he's trying to make a move and the car in front of him blocks him. However, now it seems like the ADA has better tires than the one. The one doesn't seem like she has the best tires right now and that's probably hurting her. However, I think she's gonna make the move stick this, no, in the center of the corner, once again, kind of like John Arndt, loses the car a little bit there, or loses the um, rear end a little bit there, and has to back out to save it, and the one can't really do a whole lot about that, and the 88's gonna hold the spot because of that, unless the one gets a better run off the corner, which we're gonna stay with this as long as the battle's decided, and it looks like right there, the one just got the position. However, now the 1 slides up the track, and the 88's going to try and fight back. However, once again, the, he couldn't get by the 1, and the 1 really didn't even block, but now that's going to put him under pressure from the 25. Ooh, wow. Grayson Ace Vito's not very quick at all right there. And now here comes the 1, maybe trying an outside move, because now the outside line's got some grip in it, and actually it's better because you're going longer around the track, so you don't have to slow down as much in the center of the corner. So now it's all just depending on how well you can keep your momentum up. 
the center of the corner. And look, now they're down to 142. They're going to have to pit pretty soon here. And you're going to start seeing that when cars pit, they're going to have a huge advantage pitting early. So we're going to start seeing who is going to start coming in early. We're going to keep our eye on that, and they're going to be paying huge dividends. Just look now on old tires. Look how quick that um, Reddit Davis car is starting to look now. He's just passing cars left and right on the inside simply because of just how much grip he's got in the center of the corner. He's doing things that other cars can't dream of doing because of the uh, tire situation some of these other cars are. That Reddit Davis just simply isn't that hard on tires because it's a light, which um, is greatly beneficial for somebody like um, Vince Freeze. Vince Freeze is rocketing through the field right now while other cars are really struggling. Vince Freeze went from 8th to 5th in one lap, or 8th to 6th rather, in one lap, and from 10th to 6th in about three laps, which is just showing how quick this Vince Freeze car is on older tires. I wonder what his teammates are doing right now as well. His teammates are looking pretty similar, actually. Look at the speed that Ray Hall's carrying through the center of the corner. Where's Monaco in all this? Monaco was down in 20th. Mo Monaco's the first to pit, so ooh, Monaco's going to be fun. Monaco's on pit road. He is going to fly around some of these cars at this rate. As long as he doesn't catch a caution while he's a lap down, Monaco will be in a great position later in this race. And now here comes some of the other cars on pit road as Ace Vito, Myatt, and... Well, Myatt takes the lead. Ace Vito's in second, and a couple other cars are staying out. This is not a great move, because one lap means so much here as uh, John Arts on pit road as well. So I'm watching to see what the position game for Monaco is going to be. Monaco was down in, like, 23rd position. And now, this is going to be a big position gain, I think, for Eric Monaco. Zachary Fitzwater continues to stay out. Now, this is a... Fitzy's waiting on a yellow, basically. And that's going to be a pretty dastardly plan, if you ask me. As, ooh, they almost got up there with the two and the six. As a couple of the leaders now are coming down pit road. Maya was leading the race. Maya came in very late. Uh, I don't think that's going to pay off well for him. Where is the 24 right now? The first car to pit. You're going to just see him start nailing cars here, because look how fast he's going. He's going 165 through the center of the corner, and the others went with 140 down to 135 at the end of their run. So he's going to have a two-lap lead over everybody else on their tire compound, like on their tire concentration. Also, Ryan Griffin, um, who was way up the order, also, I guess, pitted early. But now you're seeing some of these cars really get back out there. I'm looking to see where Art is compared to everybody else. Where is John Art? Is my question. Art was the leader of the race, and I'm not sure where he is right now. He is back in the lead of the race. Where is second? Second looks like his Ace Vito? No! Wow, that just shows what tires can do for you. Aren't just lapped up to 16th position. Or up to 23rd, I'm sorry. 23rd position, including the former 10th place car of Kenny Myatt. So Kenny Myatt, by staying out two extra laps, lost an entire lap on track. So that just proves how well tires are around here, how important they are to get a good run here. And you're seeing cars like Aiden Shepard, who wasn't that bad on the order, and some other cars are not in great condition. However, as this race goes on, as this one goes on, now these guys are hoping for a green flag run because they're going to have better tires at the end of the ra or at the end of the run. But right now, John Arch just called everyone's bluff by pitting early and just ended up really making his game a lot better. But fuel can also be a factor as well. Scott Rouch is in second position. Madeline Myatt third. Fourth is Chris Dodd who pitted early. Fifth is Vince Freeze, who pitted normal with everybody else, yet still had one of the fastest cars on older tires. Ray Hall, sixth. Seventh is Padcar. Eighth is Curtis. Ninth is Jones. Tenth is Griffin. And with that, Eric Monaco jumped upwards of 12 positions from when he pitted to now, just by staying out. Or just by coming in early, rather. So after Eric Monaco, you have Dornan Bouchard, who Look how many positions he lost by staying out an extra lap. He's down to 12. Brock, Angel, 
Talgar, Hart, Dunbar, Gurian, Vanderpesh, Fitzwater. I didn't like Fitzwater and Halleck staying out, but apparently they haven't been lapped yet, so that's good for them. By lap 50, John Art's tires are already starting to fall off, though. And he's, but he's got a five second lead over everybody else, so you're starting to see some of these lapped cars. Becca Moss is two laps down. She had a pitted late and had a bad pit stop at that. But you're starting to see drivers like Kenny Mine, who remember was in the top 10 beforehand, are now really starting to really show their speed now compared to Hart. They're almost a half second faster than Hart right now a lap. And you're going to start seeing that where a lot of these cars have pitted, and you're seeing these left cars are pulling away from Art actually, because Art's tires are falling off. And that's just a big strategy call here. It's, now there's also a fuel question, because when the tires are going before fuel, then can they make it to the end based on their pit stop strategy? That's a big question to ask. Becca Moss has gotten one of her laps back, and it looks like Kenny Myatt's going to follow suit, getting his one lap back. This is just all a strategy game now. It is now Art is about three tenths slower than a lot of cars out there right now. And a lot of the cars behind him trying to get their laps back are really struggling with that. There's Madeline Myatt, got by Roush, pitted before her. Myatt now is quicker than a lot of the, than the leader. I mean, look at Grayson Ace Vito. He was in the lead before the pit stop cycle. He's down a lap down because he pitted late. So... This is, and he didn't get a great pit stop either, I have to also add, but it's all a big strategy game now. And now you're seeing a lot of these cars are, aren't really struggling now. Now you're seeing cars like Zachary Fitzwater, who are just slow getting lapped, and Chase Dunbar is another one that's had issues today, Vander Pesch, but they pitted well. They've had the right strategy, however, aren't still able to lap because, quite frankly, they might be on the same strategy, but they're just slower than the 83 car. Ironically, no car has fallen out of the race in this one either. This track tends to be a very high attrition race where a lot of cars fall off, and I don't believe a single car has fallen out of the race. No, not one car has fallen out of the race because there's 36th position Becca Moss, who has had a disastrous start to her season right now. And John Art, like I said, this is going to be huge for him because he's going to end up with a ton of points if he comes out of this thing with a win. Um, however, no cars out of the race yet, and we were expecting this one to be a big engine race where a lot of engines were going to be under threat in this one, and that hasn't been the case. Madeline Maya currently is in second position, kind of dealing with some of these lap cars of Bichelia, Lomas, um, Ace Vito, and Maya's just right now kind of in cruise mode right now as well, but remember, Arnton has got such a lead right now, I think no matter what, he's going to be in the lead at the end of the cycle. So, Art's going to be the first one to pit road, even with him going a lot slower than a lot of other cars. But like I said, tires are just such a factor today. And I'm interested to see, how are the 05 and the 5 doing? And, well, the 05's in third, that tells you a lot right there. And he's running very well with some of these other cars. Look at the 5! The 5 is back and forth. So you're seeing, you can see who these... Ooh, it looks, it looks like Roush is going to pin the 5 behind some lap traffic. And, um, well, no, the 5's got a clear road now. And I'm interested to see what the five's going to do to the center of the corner. Because the 5 seems to just... Do, the, those Reddit Davis cars just seem to do so well in there. And, oh, we got our first pitter. This is Jake Baskinger. He's realizing he needs to get back onto the lead lap somehow, and so he's pitting early to do so. I don't think it's going to work, though, because he was already a couple laps down in 34th position. The question now is, is how long is Hart going to play this game? Is Hart going to stay out longer, or is he going to bring it down pretty quick here? He actually going to look that slow, so I think Hart... I, I think this is very early for Baskinger to be pitting. I think there might be a problem with that car, actually. Um, because he pitted absurdly early. And yeah, I think they've got the hood up on that car, so I think we might have our first um, retirement of the race. Hopefully it's not an engine grenade for him, because I would hate to see him lose an engine. If Art wins this race, his co-point leader right now, Nick Pericles, is way outside of the points, down in 30th position. He did not play pit strategy right at all, and, um, well, that's not going to bode well for him wasn't a mechanical problem that would cause him to go out of the race, but Baskinger would rejoin, however, he is numerous laps down. And, uh, however, he will have nice tires. This could be a big issue, though, because he's going to have better tires, I believe. 
Oh no, he's down on power, never mind. He's way down on power. However, look how much speed he holds to the center of the corner. He's actually able to keep up with cars despite being possibly down a cylinder. So, it just shows kind of what tires is going to do. Baskinger's down a cylinder and he's able to pass some of these cars based on his freaking tires. So, he has no power down the straightaways, but he has a lot of power in the corners. John Arnn on this run has been quite lucky that he's had clear track in front of him. Down to 141 through the center of the corners. Madeline Mai at the second place car has had a lot of traffic, actually. Uh, the reigning champion has, oh, here comes the 5 once again. Well, actually, though, the 24 was the first on pit road. Did the 24 pit already? Yes, the 24 is on pit road. So we're seeing these Reddit Davis cars really trying this early. Let's bring it down pit road insanely early to see what happens. Now, I'm watching that 80, that 24 car. Now, is Art bringing it in? Art's in early. Art's in very early. And here comes the 05 in as well. I think the 05 is going to jump the one because the one stayed out to lead a lap. However, this could be beneficial as well because look how much faster Monaco's going to be. Monaco's got new tires. Everyone around him has older tires, and they're all trying to pit. Oh my, it's staying out again. You look at this. So, I'll just keep your eye on some of these cars. That's what worries me a bit here, is when you've got a lot of cars on good tires with a mix with a bunch of cars on crap tires got cars, then that's a recipe for accidents and bad ones. As Art is back out on track, there's still a lot of cars out there trying this let's go as long as we can strategy. And, um, now you're starting to see some of these other cars start pitting, so... Ooh, Art got held up, though, by the 15 car, if you look briefly there. Art got mad. Oh, the 15's really slow out there. He's staying out, though, and, well, it's, he's just banking on a caution, really. And that's just telling right there. Monaco's battling with Scott Roush, even though he had to go way up high to avoid contact there. It just shows kind of what pit strategy can do for you here. Big stack up coming out of the pits as the, 80, as the 73 would get hit by the 15 on pit road, and, well, that would be a little bit of a fracas there on pit road. Tough break for the 73 even though that was kind of on his fault because he was coming out of the pits and, well, the 15 was just there. So, predictably, John Arts in the lead of this race, and he has already lapped by a couple of laps a couple of these other cars, so... Uh, John Arts got a big lead over second place, Vince Freeze. And third place, oh man, is Eric Monaco in third? Fourth place, Rouge is in third. But still, Eric Monaco up to fourth place after his early pit strategy. Great move by Monaco. However, a debris caution would fly on lap. Um, let's see what lap it is actually for John Art, the leader. 82 here for John Art. So Art's massive lead is going to be um, closed up massively. And this actually helps like Kenny Maeda, who was about to put a lap down. And a couple other cars, Bouchard was as well, getting close there. So now you've got a caution here that's going to bunch this field back up. Now I'm guessing pretty much everyone's going to pit. They'd be idiotic not to. And actually, ooh! Art missed the pit road. And the 05 didn't. I'm guessing that might have been a miscommunication there by Art. I'm guessing he's going to come back down pit road. However, I'm thinking the 05 is going to lead coming, on to, coming off the pits. Although, we got a couple of cars that stayed out, actually. It only was a couple of cars that brought it down. Art, or Freeze, and a ray hole. Wow, all the... Okay, I see what they're doing here. These are all the Reddit Davis cars decided to pit. Everybody else decided to stay out. Okay, well, that's interesting. Now, granted, we've seen that they, they didn't have much of a green flag run here. However, we've seen that one lap means a lot of difference here. So the fact that these cars are all pitting could be a stroke of genius by the Reddit Davis crew as Art leads over Griffin, uh, that is, over, I'm sorry, Roush, Griffin, uh, Dodd, and a couple other cars back there as well. So Art's going to lead. Remember, he's a lot of older tires than those three cars in the back. I'm going to watch how the three cars in the back do. This is going to be fun to watch. As, ooh, looks like the 24 didn't get a great start there. But let's go back up to the lead of this race now. As 
John Art now continues to lead this one here. Didn't want to go to the helicopter cam. And didn't want to go to that cam either. But now it's a battle for second now as the outside line is really full of a lot of lead lappers. There is, it looks like uh, Shepard's trying to get one of his laps back. Uh, Griffin now got to the inside line and Roush is falling back left and right. Looks like Griffin's going to take over second position now over... Um, actually, no, who's in second? Oh, Griffin went up from the back all the way up to second. He went from third to second, back to third. And Madeline Myatt's in second. So it's kind of confusing. Actually, now Dodd's in second. So it's very confusing a lot of times when they get packed up like this. Who is where? However, I think we figured it out. No, nope, Myatt's now in second, but... No, Angel's now in second. Take that back. Angel's in second. I didn't know Angel was on the lead lap, to be honest with you. We're on a very quiet race, Sean Angel has. But John Art once again got a big lead there. My question is, what are they gonna what are like the 24 in this group gonna do? They're passing cars left and right. Where's the 05 is my question as well. The 05 is Ooh, big crash on track already! Okay, that ex that's going to stop this, and that's going to be Baskinger and Dover in a wreck. Yeah, Dover got hit, by, or got turned by Gurry in there down track, and well, this is just going to be a pretty um, interesting incident there as Dover's on track trying to get back going again, and Baskinger just clobbers in there. Puts Baskinger out of his misery, though, thankfully. It was heartbreak for Vince Freeze, though, as he had to pit because of a tire rub. There was a little bit of contact on that restart, and that had to, he had to bring it down pit road, so a good strategy didn't exactly work out the best for him. Everybody pitted this time, by the way. So John Art is going to get back in the lead, including two Reddit Davis cars. John Art is going to have the lead once again over Sean Angel in second, Griffin third, Madeline Maya in fourth, Dodd in fifth, and a bunch of other cars. Wow, Eric Monaco had a quick stop as well. Now, Vince Freeze is on the tail end of the lead lap, keep in mind. Actually, no, he is on the tail, like I said, the tail end of the lead lap. So Freeze can try and get his lap back here. Um, they're going to need to pit once more, these groups are, simply because of tires, really, the way that the cautions have fallen. Uh, and um, they're going to need to pit again for tires. They might make it on fuel, but I still think that they would, if you pit, you would still be able to catch the cars that didn't pit simply because of how slow some of those cars go. Art leads on the restart again. We're going to see if the 05 can hold his position up there. He's in 13th, so he's got some points going forward. As, ooh, Angel with a bad, bad start there. Griffin's already looking underneath Angel for second. And actually, the uh, 83 is going underneath the 05 to lap him. So that didn't go well for the driver of the 83, or for the driver of the 05 car, Vince Freeze. As here comes... Now we're going to see if anybody can really challenge Art here. This is a big thing here. Is now Griffin looks like he's a car that might be able to do something here with Art. And uh, he's using lap cars to his advantage here. Is Ooh, what's Griffin going to do with Art? We might get a new leader here. Art's going to lead the lap. However, I think Griffin's going to lead the race in the long run here. Yes, he is. As John Art has lost the lead of the race. Where's third place in all this? Third place is actually Noah Hart now. Well, Kyle Bashai is a lap down, trying to make some crazy moves there. Um, at this rate, we might see another caution with how these guys are racing right now as this race kind of heats up. And now, John Hart now is trying to re-catch Ryan Griffin. Oh, we do have another yellow. Five wide, it's not a great idea here. It uh, looks like Zayden Davidson pushes up into Eric Monaco, and the six and the... Four go around with the eight of pad cars, so pretty minor accident there. Not a whole lot of damage in that one. A couple lead lap or one lead lap car of pad car was in it though. Everybody pits again, but this time um didn't look like Ryan Griffin got the best pit stop if you ask me. Ryan Griffin lost a ton of time on pit road, so John Art has retaken the lead on the pit road cycle, I believe. Uh, I don't believe anybody. St oh, actually, a couple cars did stay out. Dorn and Bouchard stayed out. Looks like Monaco stayed out as well. Um, so that's going to make things pretty interesting because you've got another couple of cars that stayed out. They're banking on another caution, I'm guessing. Also, William Brock are out of the pits, too. So Brock had an amazingly fast pit stop and now is in third. 
So there's a bunch of cars trying to get their lap back, being Wallish, uh, Pericles, Gurian, and Michelia. And if um, there's another quick yellow here, that might be a realistic opportunity here with Bouchard in the lead. Um, Monaco's in second. Green flag is out once again here, and away we go. And here they all fly down into turn one again. And much cleaner start, actually. You didn't have somebody bottling up the entire field as Brock's going for second now. Brock's going for second position. And didn't get it, though. Oh, actually, he did get it. I take that back. Oh, Art's got a pit. Art is in the pit road. That is not good. They said he sped down pit road along with Ryan Griffin. Oh, that's got to be gut-wrenching. Art, John Art has led this race from the get-go, and we think it was a stop-go penalty. Yes, it was. Both cars got a stop-go penalty for um, either jumping the start or um, speeding down pit roads. So that's going to drastically hurt them. So Bouchard leads this race over second position is Eric Monaco. And third back there looks like it's Sean Angel, actually. No, he's in fourth. Oh, but we got maybe another caution here. Yes, we do. And it seems to be the same place on track again. And this one would start with Chris Dodd, I think, losing control here. Actually, no, it was actually the five loss control and around with the 84 and the 41. So that would be the uh, third caution of the race. Yes, that's the third caution of the race. Considering they were only green for two laps, and now you're, and if you keep pitting, you would have to worry about tires, um, or two or three laps. Nobody came down pit road that time. I'm looking further back at the order. Uh, Aiden Shepard did get his lap back, though. So Aiden Shepard has went from two laps down back to the lead lap. So he played his cautions right and uh, ended up back on the lead lap fighting for a win. And if he pulls this off, I think that's the first time that's ever happened. So Bouchard leads on the restart this time with no tail enders in front of him. So this could be a big move for him if he's lucky here. And here they all go. It's now going to be a threat of who can get to the inside the fastest, and then will there be another caution pretty quick here? Um, that's an always another big question here. It looks like a couple of cars. That is Bobby Jones and Nick Pericles are going to try and get on the lead lap if there's a quick yellow. As, ooh, Brock and Angel are now trying to take over the lead of this race, and it looks like Brock is going to do this maybe here. And Brock gets underneath Bouchard, and this could be a big move for William Brock, Eric Monaco, and a bunch of other cars here. So, ooh, Brock slides, though. Brock slides that puts Monaco underneath them. They're three wide for the lead. However, I think Bouchard's going to get a contact there between the 24 and the 24 was sliding all over the place. The 81 nearly clobbered in there. Ooh, contact there between the 2 and the 81. The 81 had to back out of it. Pad car is going to be the big beneficiary of it. Oh, boy, this race really picked up in intensity on this last restart here. But we got to keep looking further back for another caution to possibly fly because you've got some pretty um, intense racing back here. And this is where it's going to happen if there's going to be a caution. I still don't know if they're going to stay out that long, though. Personally, I still don't buy the fact that they're going to stay out. They, if somebody pits, that would be very interesting to see, especially if they're a lead lap car pitting. So, ooh, Tauger getting a little shaky there with um, 77 of Shalroth. As now you've got Bouchard continuing to lead over Brock, Angel, and Padcar. Then you've got Monaco and then Kenny Myatt in six with the lap car of Pichelia. No, only the lap car of Pichelia blocking Myatt, Roush, Hart, and Ray Hall. It's the only lap car separating the leading group, so this race has gotten a lot more competitive as this has gone on. And now with lap cars in front of Bouchard, that could be a big, big factor as this race continues to wind itself down. However, Bouchard's looking to get by Bobby Jones here and lap him again. Jones is just hoping for a yellow quick here, a quick yellow here, as is Pericles, as now Angel's trying to take over second position now on Brock. And this is where things are going to get pretty interesting here, because it looks like 
Um, Bouchard's able to get underneath him for a little bit there. The lap car, however, isn't able to pass him because it looks like the three is just using up every bit of tires to stay on the lead lap. Because like I said, he's only betting for a caution. He would pit on that caution when he got his lap back. Sean Angel now is all over the back end of Dornan Bouchard. Two Canadians fighting for the lead of this race. And it looks like Angel's going to get underneath him and take over the lead. So Angel now leads the race over Dornan Bouchard. And now this race is getting pretty hectic now. As uh, Bouchard stayed out, I think, a little too long on his tires. I believe it. No, they're actually on the same strategy, I believe, tire-wise. Just Angel held his tires up better. Now it's time to watch Pad Car and Monaco if they can get a run here on uh, Bouchard and Angel up in the lead. This could be a big showing for them. The field is relatively spread out, so now it doesn't look like there's going to be any um, cautions the rest of the way unless there's like a mechanical problem or something. And it looks like um, Angel's going to have some of the same issues that Bouchard had with Jones here. And it looks like Padcar has gotten all over the back of Bouchard here. So here we go again. Um, Jones isn't going to let that position by so easily, I don't think. Uh, Jones is going to need a caution quick, though, if he's going to have any shot at this. As Bouchard is really holding up the 8 car in the 24. The 24 is going to use this to, as an opportunity to get underneath the 8 of Pad Car. And, um, well, this is kind of the stuff we're looking at. BFM has not done very well this year. As now, oh, now Angel's going to have uh, Benjamin Dover car in between himself and some of his compadres on track. And it looks like, oh, Bob Bouchard's going to get held up there by him a bit. And Angel now is trying to steal this win away. However, it looks like all the lead lap cars, with the exception of Bouchard, ironically, aren't going to get, are going to get by the 80 car. And because Sean Angel's been having trouble getting by Bobby Jones, Pad Car and Monaco are closing in now. So this could be another day where you've got to just pray for Sean Angel that the laps come to a close quicker like Aiden Shepard was doing. However, could Monaco play that game that his teammate did at Mexico? Sean Angel finally is going to get a run underneath Bobby Jones here, and this is going to be crucial for Angel as he kept his speed up pretty high through the center of that corner. So great to see Angel try that move and make it work. And I think they are going to make it to the end on tires. They are slower, but they're going to make it to the end because everybody's on the same boat right now. Angel now has gotten by Pericles, and Padcar's only gotten by Jones, so I think right now you're pretty much going to see Sean Angel win this race. You're coming to three to go. That's a big gap back to Padcar and back to Monaco. I think you're going to see Angel just sneak this one away here. As Angel's, like I said, he's got clear track in front of him, and it looks pretty pretty well set now for Angel here, unless it's like a major mechanical problem were to take place. And with only two laps to go, I think BFM finally snookered him on pit strategy, ironically. Uh, Angel has, throughout this race, been on a good pit strategy of pitting early, and it's been a big Achilles heel of um, BFM. It's been the pit strategy calls, however, Sean Angel really has played a wonderful pit strategy game. Oh, Gurian has to pit. Uh, but Sean Angel takes the white flag of this race here, and well, it's been a very classy drive by Sean Angel, I gotta be honest with you, with his pit strategy. BFM played a wonderful strategy there. Nothing pad car or anybody could do. Sean Angel just had a better restart, and Sean Angel's gonna come off turn number four to win the round of Brazil here at the Autodromo de Alfonso Cordova. Second goes to Padcar, third goes to Monaco, fourth goes to Bouchard, fifth to Brock, and then sixth to Kenny Myatt, seventh to Ray Hall, eighth to Hart, ninth to Dodd, and as we go a little further back, tenth to Rausch, um, eleventh to Shepard, and I believe Bouchard actually had hit, if I'm not mistaken. No, Bouchard was fourth. Never mind. Let's go down to your full finishing results. Sean Angel wins the race with Eddie Schimpecker second, Eric Monaco third, Bouchard fourth, Brock fifth, Myatt sixth, Rahal seventh, Hart eighth, Dodd ninth, Roush tenth, Shepard eleventh, only cars on a lead lap, Pericles twelfth, Jones thirteenth, Bichelia fourteenth, 
Hearn 15th, Freeze 16th, Allen 17th, Curtis 18th, uh, Davidson 19th, Ace Vito 20th, 21st to Wallace, 22nd to uh, Griffin, 23rd to Tauger, 24th to Fitzwater, 25th to Vanderpesh, 26th to Halleck, 27th to Dunbar, 28th to Conwell, 29th to Dormitory, 30th to Moss, 31st to Lamas, 32nd to Shalrat, 33rd to Gurian, 34th to Dover, 35th to Madeline Mide, who was disqualified for something, and 36th to um, uh, Jake Baskinger. I'm not sure why Myatt was disqualified, but we're going to get a little bit more of a look at that. And we're just going to get a little update on this. Myatt was um, supposed to pit for about three laps for speeding on pit road, but just didn't obey it. And so they stopped scoring her and then told her to pit under yellow and they pulled her off the track for that. So I have a feeling Madeline Mike could be under some big investigator, investigative scrutiny for that one. So with that being said, Eddie Schimpadkar is your point leader leaving this race. Nick Pericles is behind him by only a handful of points. Aiden Shepard's behind him by one. Then you have Arnton Boucher, all within six points of each other. So with the American 700 coming up, which awards 50 points, the American 700 is the next race because it got bumped up the schedule. Um, yeah, that's going to be imp important to get a good run at the American 700 with the 50 points for a win with Baskinger, Rahal, Dodd, Jones, Freeze, Monaco, Angel, Hart, and Myatt all down there. And really within, if, if you have seven points, you could theoretically come out of here with the championship lead, out of the American 700 with the championship lead. So technically Vander Pesch, if you won the American 700, could win, could be in the lead of the championship. Theoretically, yes. Um, so you've got Matty Mike, Kenny Mike, Bachelia Bra Roush, Brock, Curtis Griffin, Davidson. I'm surprised Curtis only has 13 points. He's done very well this year. Uh, Griffin, again, another driver who's done pretty well. Davidson, Vanderpesh, Dover, Shawrot, Dormitory, Gurian, Halleck, Ace Vito, Codwell. Tauger surprisingly only has. I can't believe he only has no points. He hasn't scored a point yet. He has been strong this year. Same with Alex Allen. Everybody else I can kind of expect wouldn't have points. Moss. Moss should have points, but she's just been completely awful this year. A lot of concern whether if, um, that team is going to keep her uh, much longer or if the 84 might go to somebody else. However, with that being said, I'm not exactly sure if... Um, like I said, I don't know if Moss will be in that car too much longer unless her performances improve. Um, other than that, not a whole lot of surprises there. Shepard doing well up at the top of the grid. Ray Hall doing, doing very, very well up at the top of the grid. Um, very, I realistically could see the Reddit Davis cars fighting for a championship. Theoretically, I could especially with the American 700 going to be more of a tire strategy race this year than anything else because of the new tire compounds that Cooper is bringing this year. Anyway, without further ado, we will see you next week for the biggest race of our entire season. Even though it's earlier this year, it's on Memorial Day weekend rather than 4th of July weekend. They did this because of the heat in, um, Fontana, Cali or in um, yeah, Fontana, California. And the fact that they wanted a day race that it would be easier to view on the East Coast, so they moved the American 700 to Memorial Day. And now there's a race in Daytona, Florida, um, a 400 miler on the 4th of July. So without further ado, our next race is the biggest race of the season, the American 700. We'll see you there.